um, it was created, or a version thereof, in the 9th century, more or less. Susan Benjamin owns Cool Confections, a candy shop that specializes in historical candy. I'm a cool. delicious, right? 19th century whorehound candy made from a plant in the mint family. Hardtack, eaten by American Civil War soldiers. And wax-flavored lips, an early 20th century treat, are all part of her inventory. <laughs> They start here with the first in history. Benjamin offers her unique take on history as visitors browse through several centuries of confections. Candy is not about sugar. It is not a simple subject. It is about slavery. It's about the Industrial Revolution. It's about commerce. It's about marketing. It's about who we are. Cool Confections is in Harper's Ferry, West Virginia a small town on the banks of the Potomac and Shenandoah Rivers. Abolitionist John Brown led a famous slave rebellion here in 1859, and the town was also the site of a major U.S. Civil War battle in 1862. This is spruce resin gum, which was eaten by the Native Americans of the Northeast. Early candies often had other purposes than satisfying a sweet tooth. Because it was hard and not tacky, they would chew it, and it would scrape the plaque from their teeth, exercise their jaw, and some thought also help them purify their blood. The development of sugarcane as a sweetener spread from Southeast Asia in the 16th century. Candy and things made from sugar were primarily treats for Europe's wealthy class. Pan candies were popular. What they would do would take a teeny little seed or take an almond, a seed or a nut, and they would add layers and layers of sugar to them. Before the American Civil War, which ended slavery, sugar production was controversial. Popular rock candies of the time, like these, were made from cane sugar processed by African American slaves. Sugar was a big part of the economy of slavery. So it was highly, highly volatile. The abolitionists boycotted sugar, and they would have beet sugar, or they would have maple sugar, or, or nothing instead. After the war, when sugar was readily available, penny candies for the masses were popular, like Tootsie Rolls. Now all of a sudden, you see these working class kids who are able to go into stores and take out a, a few cents and buy candy. They were, in a sense, entering the middle class. Benjamin sells a lot of her candies to museums and online. Many were out of production. So she spent years researching recipes and hiring manufacturers to make them again. The Swicord, VOA News, Harper's Ferry, West Virginia. One quick second.